today we're talking about chicken grilling tips. How to cook chicken on a gas grill without burning it. Because you don't want to end up in a situation like this, right? <laughs> Welcome to my front yard. I'm here today to talk about grilling chicken. So I think that a lot of people struggle with grilling chicken and I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't one of them at one point or at many points. Um, there's a lot of kind of technical issues that you can run into when grilling chicken. So I want to run through the four main ones that I could think of and that kind of tend to be problematic and then I'll show you how to grill chicken in a really easy way. So number one is the bone and skin debacle. So I honestly think that skin on bone in chicken is not ideal for grilling. And I think that barbecue experts and grilling experts would probably say, oh no, it's fine. You just have to use indirect heat and it, and it works out great. I just, I find that the skin never gets as crispy as I want it to get when I'm grilling skin on chicken. And I also find that cooking it nice and evenly when it's on the bone takes a really long time. And when I'm at a barbecue and there's people coming and going and smacking their hot dogs on there and like flipping their tofu patties and whatever, like it's just not a controlled enough environment to really fully cook my chicken through when it's on the bone. So that's one. The other thing about the bone in skin on is that skin contains a lot of fat and fat drips onto the grill and causes flare ups. So if you've ever fallen victim to this, I know I have, you put uh, you know, skin on chicken thigh on the grill and it just immediately you've, you're up in flames and it's unbearable. <laughs> so another reason I like to go boneless skinless. The second issue is the direct versus indirect heat thing. And like I mentioned in the first point, it's the idea when you're cooking something that takes a long time is to cook it really hot uh, and get the grill marks and everything on the hot side and then move it over to an indirect heat so that it can continue cooking through. But I kind of just touched on that. I don't think that that really works in, in the real world unless you're like in a very controlled environment. And the best way to get indirect heat, in my opinion, is the oven. So, which is another reason why bone-in skin on chicken is better cooked in the oven, I think. Point number three is marinades and rubs. So marinades are great, uh, rubs are great. The thing you wanna be careful of is sugar content. So if you're marinating chicken in something very sweet, like barbecue sauce, um, you will increase your chances of burning it. Sugar burns really easily, so it's not a good idea to use anything that contains sugar during the actual cooking process of the chicken. If you wanna put barbecue sauce on or something with a bit of sugar in it, you can add that towards the end, which I'll show you in a bit. The other factor to good grilled chicken is properly oiling the grill, and I'll show you how to do that too. All right, so with all that said, let's grill some chicken. Cheers. I, I don't think it's really a thing to grill outside without a nice refreshing beverage of some kind, whether that's beer or kombucha or, you know, even a little ice water. I don't really care. I'm a beer girl. I think you might know that if you've watched any of my videos. So I've got my gas grill on here and this is a gas grill conversation, although a lot of the same principles go for uh, charcoal grills as well. Um, I do have a charcoal grill, but it's I'm just not going to set it up right now. <laughs> I've been marinating this chicken with lemon zest and juice, a bit of olive oil, salt, and some Aleppo pepper, just as a kind of basic marinade. So nothing major going on here, no sugar, nothing like that. Um, and there is oil in this, which means that should help with the nonstick aspect, but I'm also going to oil the grill. So for that, I tend to just get a little bowl of any oil and I use like old t-shirts. I rip them up and use them as rags for things like this. 
uh, and then they kind of just get chucked after they get really gnarly. So use some tongs to soak up the oil into the shirt scrap <laughs> rag and then just brush it on. The reason you don't, I mean, obviously you wouldn't want to pour oil onto here because that's crazy. Um, I see a lot of people using like nonstick spray. Uh, we did that a lot in the restaurant land, just, just, and you'd get this massive flare up, but it was kind of fun. Um, this is the way I do it at home. So just give it a good rub. And rubbing it makes sure that you also get like the whole grate instead of just the very, very top. Cause when you put things on the grate, it kind of slumps down. So you want to make sure that that whole thing is oiled. And this is on high heat cause I'm just ready to go. Um, I've got a little bit of a cooler section here. We'll, I'll demonstrate why. So I've got both uh, models of chicken today. I've got bone in skin on chicken thighs, which I'm grilling even though I don't want to, but I'm just showing you what that's all about. So we'll do a couple of those. I mean, we could just grill all of these, I guess. Yeah, let's grill them all. One thing about grilling, very good trick to know is remember which order you put things down on. So, hey, <laughs> um, where was I? Paparazzi. Um, one trick about grilling is to remember which order you lay things down in. So whether you're going to go clockwise or, you know, from right to left or left to right, just kind of remember that way, you know, which one to flip first and it's not just a bunch of chaos. So you want to lay your chicken down in an orderly fashion. So these are the boneless guys and I'm kind of just dabbing them on a little bit of paper towel on their way to the grill to kind of dry them off a little bit. And I'm going to hope that none of these stick. I'm going to close this up and come back and take a look at them in, well, see this actually, I don't even have to close it. Exhibit A, the ones with the skin on have already caused a flare up. Yeah, so that's going to get out of control really quickly and I might even just take these off early and get them into the oven, but I just wanted to demonstrate. So let's close this up. Yeah, we've got like crazy flare ups already. Oh, look at that. Woo. And I know it's not going to be crispy. It's not crispy. It'll be burnt before it's crispy. This side, no flare ups. This side, tons of flare ups. Okay, I'm going to close it. Okay, so it's been about five minutes and I did have to do some shuffling around because already we were getting some mega flare ups with the skin on chicken. So if we take a look here, you can see the skin sticks pretty easily. That one's not too bad, but it's Ooh, that one actually looks great. <laughs> okay, maybe this is an advertisement for grill your chicken with your skin on. That one looks amazing. But like this one, black right away. Totally like within a second, it just got flared up and blackened. So it's just unpredictable, you know? It, or it's, it's more difficult to manage. So let's see what else we got here. That one doesn't look too bad. Some real hot spots and cool spots going on with this grill. It was cheap. The skinless guys are looking pretty okay. Um, that's just kind of, I don't know. I just kind of prefer it. Like, look at that. So nice. And it's almost cooked anyway. It's like, we'll be eating these within a couple minutes. Whereas this, the guys on the bone are going to take another pretty long time. I'm going to move the bone in guys to the cool area. And I'll probably just finish those in the oven because it's going to take a long time. These boneless ones are pretty much done. So now is the time to add any kind of sweet glaze or barbecue sauce type thing. This is like a oyster sauce mixed with a bit of ketchup and a bit of sambal olek. 
just made it up. I hope it's good. So I'll just brush it on. Again, this is within, you know, I'm gonna take these off within five minutes. So it's, it's cooked. They're not gonna be cooking with this sugary mixture on. In one of the upcoming videos, I'm gonna do a uh, veggie grilling, which I'm so excited about because <clears throat> people often grill the same old stuff. They grill like zucchini and peppers and asparagus, but I've got a few interesting, unique veggies that you may not have thought of grilling that we're gonna grill. So you'll have to subscribe if you wanna make sure to catch that one. Okay. So that's on, just give it another little flip. And I'll just close it long enough for the barbecue sauce to kind of get a little caramelization without burning, of course. Maybe like two, three, four, five minutes or so. So after we put the barbecue sauce thing that I invented on, we just kind of let it cook for another couple minutes and now it's looking really, really nice. I'm glazed and shiny and glossy. And so I'm gonna call those done. So as I take these guys off the grill, I'm gonna be careful that they are in fact cooked through. And I'm gonna do that with my favorite thermometer, this Thermopop. Um, I've never had a thermometer that I trusted so, so much in my life. And I've never had a thermometer that I was so impressed by the thinness of the tip. Like, you know, you buy those thermometers that are just these big, they're just big pokers. Like they just burrow a hole right into whatever you're cooking. I love this one because the tip is really fine. So this is Thermopop. This is my favorite thermometer and there's a link to purchase them in the description box below. I'm gonna go in sideways. A lot of people go in through the top, but there's not a lot of thickness there. So you might just poke through to the bottom without knowing it. So you wanna get into the dense part. So you want it to be like 165 for chicken, which this is easily. So as soon as it reaches 165, you know you're good to go. And if I were to check one of these bone in ones right now, like this big guy, it's only at 130. So this, this has a long way to go still, but these boneless skinless thighs are done too. So it's just kind of nice to have a low maintenance, lower maintenance protein. Um, we didn't have any flare ups. They're done cooking. They're tasty. They're glazed. They're barbecuey. Maybe I should taste one with a little lettuce leaf. Seeing as I have my garden right here, Then I can just take one of my homegrown lettuce leaves, rip off a bit of chicken, and make a little snack, a little garden snack. Mmm, mmm. Ooh, that's really good chicken. That's it for my chicken grilling tips today. I hope you found it useful and I hope that you can go forth in your chicken grilling adventures feeling confident and flare up free. So let me know if you like it. Let me know if you agree with me or disagree with me in the comments. I'd love to chat down there and have a good week. We'll see you next week. You don't wanna end up in a situation like this. Right? Oh! Let's, let's, let's not include that part. <laughs>